my name is Marie. Welcome to See You Mommy Connection. Let me first say Happy Father's Day to all of those wonderful dads out there. This show is especially for you. The other day I was riding home from work and I was driving around in the neighborhood and all of a sudden the aroma of barbecue filled the air. Now for me that signifies the beginning of summertime. And, you know, when I smell barbecue, I think of childhood memories, fun family get-togethers, and I immediately get hungry and my mouth starts watering. So, basically, what we want to do in this episode is welcome in the summer and give you guys some tips and some recipes on how to have a great summer with the perfect barbecue. Joining me today is Guy Nelson and my husband, Alan Polk, also known as the Master Griller. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thanks for having us. And a happy Father's Day Thank you. to you Thank guys you. as Thank well. You. Right? Um, let's talk about barbecue, okay? And we're gonna start by talking about um, this debate. It's a long-lived debate. <laughs> Gas or charcoal? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just, you know, I put it out there, you guys started laughing, so let's talk about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose the question, and I just want you to give me your immediate gut reaction. All right? Nice. Gas or charcoal? Gas. Charcoal. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two, two different sides of the coin going on here. So let's just, for our audience, let's talk about the pros and cons of gas grilling versus charcoal grilling. All right, first I will tell you that I did some internet research about you know gas versus charcoal, because this is a long-lived debate. Um, and there were some pros and cons. There were some positive things about gas grilling, I will admit. Um, there were some positive things about charcoal grilling. So what do you guys have to say about all of this? Well, I know for myself, you know, I, I do like charcoal grilling. I do, mm -hmm. but you don't always have time to sit and wait for that for that charcoal to get ready. You know, it's it's what 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes hour. At, a, at a minimum, hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, to get ready to go. Okay. Get off work at 6:30. I come back. I can't wait until 7:30 to start cooking dinner. Right. So that, I mean, that's that's really my 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 big pro to the propane mm -hmm. is is just come in, kick that thing on. Five minutes, ten minutes tops. The grill is hot. Everything burn off of it. I'm ready to slap stuff on. Do you get the same flavor, the same smokiness with gas as you get with charcoal? What do you think, Al? There's no way. There's no way. Cause, I mean, with charcoal, you know, and this the grease, the juices from the meat, you know, it's just hitting the coals and then it's producing that smoke and the flavor. And there's just no way you can get that with uh, gas, I don't think. What do you say to that? I say that sometimes that charcoal overpowers the true flavor of the meat. Mm. So it takes away from some of the some of the flavoring of the meat itself. So that's where, you know, you kick in just a little seasoning and I can taste that seasoning and I can, I can taste what I'm cooking. Okay, all right. So let's talk about some other pros and cons. What are some pros? to charcoal grilling? Uh, it's fun. All right, tell me more. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you just, I like to take, you know, the day, a few hours, you know, you just kick back, and um, you don't have to rush, you slow down, uh, make sure everything is right. I mean, it's some me time, quiet time, and if, if the game is on, you know, you can grab, you know, uh, cactus juice. Uh, <laughs> this is a family-oriented program. <laughs> and let's enjoy, let's enjoy the day. So it's about, for charcoal grilling, it's about the experience. Yeah. Would you say that's true for Most, gas grilling as well? Well, and, and I think that, that I turn it into an experience, mm -hmm. you know, and not every time. Because, uh, again, I do like to charcoal grill as well, mm -hmm. but I can't do it. I just don't have time in my day. Mm -hmm. See, if, so, I say, if I feel if you don't have time, you might as well stay in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, I told you. I told you it was a hot debate, right? It's a big debate. Um, let's talk about a couple of other things with um, charcoal and gas grilling. 
Um, when we think about, for example, going out and purchasing a grill, what are some of the considerations for those guys or moms out there as well? This is CU Mommy Connection. Um, who are thinking about, you know, it's summertime, maybe purchasing a new grill or getting a grill for the first time. What are some things that they should think about? Some tips, recommendations? I don't know. How are you uh, going to use it, I guess? Yeah, how are okay. you going to use it? And why, why is that important? Uh, I guess, you know, keep the maintenance on charcoal, you know, versus rag. I, I would assume it's probably more for charcoal because it gets so messy. Right. And, you, okay. you know, you want to clean it. What other considerations? Well, and, and like now they've actually even got the, the, the triple grill, uh -huh. which is, that, that, that will be my next purchase probably. Okay. <laughs> so you've got the, the smoker piece mm -hmm. on the side, kind of like Alan's got on his. It's got the smoker piece on the side. It's got a charcoal spot and it's got the propane. Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, I can do anything I want. But uh, I like the rotisserie. Mm -hmm. I do like the rotisseries on the, on the propanes. Uh, Got to have that second rack, sometimes even that third rack on there, so that you can slow cook a lot of stuff, yeah. uh, and then and still speed cook on the bottom rack. I will admit though, they, room. they do look good. They have stainless steel gas. They I mean, they really do make I guess your patio or whatever look really right. nice. That's something you and I were talking about. Um, you know, I know you love the charcoal grill, but it gets all beat up, and you know. Yeah. It's not so pretty after the first few times you use it it's, with that's the... That's char character. character. <laughs> now, I'll give it that. That's, no. so I, that's what I want. Yeah, if you I have a clean grill, you're like, no, so. I don't, you're not using it enough. <laughs> All right. That is something that we mentioned. So one consideration would be if you're wanting to go stainless steel, unless you get something that's like the triple grill, right. you're definitely going to, um, if you want stainless steel, you're definitely going to have to go gas. What are some um, maybe... Maybe people are a little scared of gas, right? What are some precautions there that we should just keep in mind? Just make sure when you're putting it together, I think. That's that's the main thing. When you're putting it together, follow the directions. Mm -hmm. You know, really pay attention to what's going on mm -hmm. um, because it, it is gas. Another thing is, is make sure like on windy days, if you're on a real low flame, make sure you don't lose your flame. I've okay. had a blowout. You walk up, the first thing you do, you lift it up, it's like, oh, where'd my heat go? You hit that button, boom! Oh. You know, so, <laughs> okay. so there's, you know, uh, there's just some, some, just be cautious about it. It is gas, it is very flammable, so, and it gathers up in a small area. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, let's talk about what we're going to put on the grill today. So, we are going to bring to you two back-to-back -back episodes of See You Mommy Connection that's dedicated to barbecue. In this first episode, we're going to focus on the meat, okay, the manly meat that you put on the grill. Ribs. Um, ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and also some chicken. We're actually going to do some chicken wings. Um, let's talk about, like, the differences in cooking on the grill. I know that some things you smoke and some things you grill or cue. What's, what's the difference? Well, when you smoke, you, you want to takes longer so if you grill anything it's fast half hour you know 40 minutes maybe mm -hmm. um, things I like to smoke would be ribs that way it takes five six hours um, you can do turkey smoke turkey uh, brisket ham mm -hmm. but like sausage chicken I like to grill like Polish yeah okay all right so there are definitely things that we would cook you know at a faster pace not really worried about that smoky flavor um, because even then, the, the smokiness permeates, like for example, a Polish, um, where you get that smoky flavor, but it cooks much faster than, say, something like ribs. So in today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, put the chicken and the ribs on the grill. And then, um, towards the end of the episode, we're also going to talk about some Texas toast. Um, there are a lot of people who like bread with their barbecue. There are others, like myself. We really enjoy a really nice brown piece of toast with the meat. So Guy will actually share with us um, some tips on how to make the best Texas toast in town. Okay, um, let's talk about some other safety precautions and things like that when it comes to food preparation and grilling. So um, let's just talk in general. What are some safety tips that you would give the viewing audience? Safety tips. 
As far as like handling the food and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, handling don't, the food, don't let food your meat temperature. Sit out too long. Yeah. You know, you want to get it um, from the fridge. Usually, I don't like to let it wait more than five minutes. You okay. Know, so we'll get up. ready to get this on the grill, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and use tongs. Uh, always wash your hands. Don't cross contaminate the food and meats if you do have to touch it. So. Okay. I always use I always use uh, like uh, some rubber gloves, latex free, powder free rubber gloves. Okay. I use those uh, to if I'm doing any kind of mixing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it just it, it just keeps things a lot cleaner. You know, okay. you can pull those things off and, and pitch them. It keeps things cleaner. It keeps things moving faster too. All right. Okay. Well, there are a few tips. Um, other tips are uh, just focusing on the temperature of the meat. For example, if you're dealing with chicken, um, whether it's whole chicken pieces, ground poultry, things like that, um, you want to make sure that the internal temperature on that meat is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, other meats, you can uh, decrease that temperature a little bit, for example, with beef around 160 degrees. Um, but keep in mind, those are the minimum requirements on temperature. Depending on how you like your meat cooked, you'd want to in increase that internal temperature. And that's important. It's the internal temperature. We know that when you have meat on the grill, oftentimes the outside cooks much faster than the inside. So you don't just want to think that your, your food is done when it looks pretty. All right. It's really, really important. Do you guys keep temperature gauges and things like that handy? Yep. I, have, um, I use one, yes. Um, I've got three. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a wireless, so if it's raining, okay, I, all right. I stick it to meat, I hang out inside and watch the temperature. <laughs> then I've got a, a that's wired a safety one. precaution. That's right. That's right. So then I've got a I've got, I've got a wired one, and then just a, a normal metal that I throw in for like yeah. smoke. See, I, I just use it maybe for like turkey, something that's you know a large amount of meat. Right. But okay. I don't know the internal temperature, so I use. But like chicken, sausage, you know, that's by eye. You know, you just know you. You, you grill long enough, you just know when it's done. It's done, you know? it's done. That's I told it. you he's the grill yeah. master, right? <laughs> like, I, I cook, and I don't use, like, measuring cups and things like that, but he's just the grill master. He can look at the meat and know it's done. All right, so <laughs> let's get this meat on the grill. Alan Polk, tell us about your seasonings on your ribs. And tell uh, us who you pay to do that for you, too. Uh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I will do it, but I think she, she seasoned the meat a lot better. Huh, thank and, you. And, I mean, you know, it's a team thing. It's, so. I was going to say, this sounds like a team thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what right. it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> she gets the meat prepared and I, and I grill it. And, and I do. Um, basically, the, the seasonings are very simple. I'm a girl who believes in like dry rubs and things like that when I'm queuing or when I'm preparing the meat because he does the queuing, honestly. Um, but really, I, I enjoy dry rubs. We get um, seasoning mixtures. We can get some pre-mixed some pre -mixed seasonings. Um, but mostly, I'm a Laurie seasoning salt fan. So I use seasoning salt, a little bit of garlic, um, powdered garlic, some pepper, black pepper, crushed red pepper, um, things like that. For the chicken, mostly the same types of seasonings but i might throw in some paprika on the chicken another tip that i learned if you want really crispy chicken and you're cooking chicken pieces use brine and actually and that's just a mixture with salt dry not liquid um, salt with all of your seasonings put it under the skin of the chicken put it in the refrigerator uncovered for at least four hours you want the chicken to be dry that way, when you put it on the grill, it helps you with that crispiness on the chicken. The other thing that we do, and it's an ancient family secret, is we have this mixture here, and I can't tell you everything that's in it, but I'll tell you a little vinegar, a little of olive oil, and some family secret seasonings, you know, like Bush's baked beans. Um, but basically, as we're cooking the chicken to also help with that crispiness, you know, Alan just kind of puts that mixture on the chicken. So, with that being said, it is ready to get the meat on the grill. Time to get the meat on the grill. Look at him. He just runs it onto the grill. And Alan, how long did you say it takes for your perfectly grilled ribs? Uh, I like to keep them on for at least six hours. Okay. And is there, are there any special tips you have for cooking the meat to perfection? Uh, just keep an eye on it, you know, you don't want to keep turning it, you know, uh, 
but usually when you smoke it like that though if you have a rack they can sit up you know um, vertical you can kind of let it go you know half hour hour at a time even okay and now he's taking the chicken over to the grill all eyes on you mr polk <laughs> While the chicken is headed back to the fridge, let's talk about, um, we've, we've spoken about, uh, you know, purchasing a grill and some important points and tips there. Let's talk about preparing the actual grill, okay? So before you can just put your meat on the grill, what are some important considerations when we're doing gas grilling? Um, I always, you know, I always just, Pick mine on and crank it up as high as it'll go for, okay. the, first, for the first little bit. Kills any bacteria that's on the grill. Mm -hmm. uh, take a little grill and brush, knock off the big chunks and stuff. But mm -hmm. honestly, I like to leave a lot of that stuff in there. It really it enhances the flavor. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have that charcoal for the flavor, a lot of that, it, we keep it in there. And it need help. Flavor. That's need right. Help. It needs help. It does need help. Because a brand new, fresh propane <laughs> grill just does not taste that great. I'll give it that. <laughs> All right. And Alan, I know that you, some of the things that Guy mentioned, you also say are important. So when you're preparing the grill, like what is that process like? Uh, it's the same. You want to, the heat always kills bacteria. So, but when you do, when you first get the grill, you want to um, cure it. Um, what does that mean? Grill. You want to spray like a vegetable oil, oil, all over it on the inside, mm -hmm. light your coals and let it burn for maybe 10 hours. And that cures all the metal. The With inside. nothing on it. Nothing. No, you know you okay. don't do any any food. Then you just let it. Yours is all about patience, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about well, patience. You know, after a long week, that's what you want to do. You want to sit back and just relax. But yeah, um, and then like I said, when when I go to grill, I like to um, I like to um, flame it up. You know, mm -hmm. use the use the fire to kill all the bacteria on the racks, and take the wire brush and knock off all the you know the, if you if you haven't cleaned it. You know, after your last grilling, just knock everything off and take paper towel, wipe, you know, your, your racks, and you're good to go. Okay. Does it matter if you're cleaning, you know, right after you cue, you know, after the grill has cooled down a little bit, or do you just wait until the next time? Some, and you know, my uncle, he cleans as soon as he finishes. Okay. Uh, I like, I, I don't, I just let it sit, and then a week, two weeks later, I come yeah, back, come and back yeah, and yeah, you know. Same here. Fire's the key. Yep, that's it. <laughs> How did you guys learn to barbecue? And like, how old were you? Like, tell us your stories. I, know, I was young. My my father, he started out. You know, he used to grill in the backyard in the garage. It was raining. He pulled the grill in the garage. You know, I thought he had the best chicken. He do okay. even drumettes. You know, dark meat. You know, drumettes. You know, wings. And uh, and I was I was pretty young then. So. Uh, and you learned to grill then by watching. I mean, it's your watching dad. him. Yeah. You know, and you know you. Just, I don't know if I learned. I mean, I was probably ready to eat. <laughs> but you know, and that, I mean, as I got older, you know, um, you ask. I ask a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. my uncles, friends, you know, family members. You know what what they do, and then and then you kind of, you know, put your little twist in it and kind of, you know, and make it a little different. But uh, it works out. Though. I mean, and, I mean, you never you never stop learning. Okay. You know how to grill. And right. It's always you know secrets. You know. <laughs> and guy how about you pretty much the same thing um you know just just start out as a young kid watching dad with the grill mm -hmm. and, and and at the time of course he was using charcoal so uh <laughs> but uh but cooking cooking hamburgers out on the deck mm -hmm. and uh you know i i think one of the one of the funnest things was was uh when we go camping dad had just a little small grill and he'd take it camping and do uh breakfast on mm -hmm. the grill so that was that twist that i'd never seen before mm -hmm. and, and i don't I don't get to see it very much anymore, even. Uh, but but he'll go out and cook breakfast, do the eggs, the whole nine yards right on the oh, grill. Wow. Yeah, it's it's great. So it was a lot of fun. So he put that that extra twist on it, kind of got me interested. And and again, I don't. I, I'm with Alan. I don't think you you know you don't learn everything. You, mm -hmm. you put your own twist on what's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And again, if someone out there is thinking about grilling, because I'll be honest. Um, 
I had Alan, it was probably two years ago. You know how you have like your bucket list of stuff you want to do in life? Um, my mom is a fabulous griller. She, she grills. Um, my grandmother can burn some barbecue. And when I make, say burn, I, I mean that in a good way. She can burn some barbecue. I'm just not a big griller. You know, I'll prepare the meat. But I think it's because I'm a little nervous about messing with the grill. When I think about having to prepare the grill, when I think about, you know, making sure the charcoals are right and things like that, I get a little nervous about it all. I think it's something you have to enjoy too, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, grilling isn't something you just, ah, oh, I got to grill tonight, you know? Yeah. It's not like no, that at all. No. It's, it's like, ah, oh, I'm grilling tonight. We're doing mm -hmm. burgers, we're doing I mean, whatever. I think about it the whole could, day, you know, like yeah. at work or whatever, you know, I get home, yeah, I'm what you're gonna do, you know? So, I mean, you gotta be positive too. Like I said, you can't be negative, like, ah, oh, you know, make it like, you know, it's, it's a task or a chore because right. then your, your food won't come out so, um, that, that good at all. You gotta enjoy yourself. Yeah. You gotta have a good time while you're doing yeah. it. All right. Well, two years ago, an item that was on my bucket list was to learn how to barbecue. And so I had Alan, I had Alan bring me out, show me how to clean it show me how to cue and I did it and the food came out great but I haven't done it since <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we're here today to help people get over their fears to share some tips to really bring in the summer in a great way all right let's talk about um, Texas toast with the barbecue um, Alan I know that uh, there's a local restaurant that we like to go to and at this restaurant, you can cook your own steaks and chicken and stuff like that. And so there are these massive grills and people are sitting around the grills. And, you know, Alan and I, we like to watch what other people are doing. And so, you know, we're watching other people. They're cooking their steaks and things. And sometimes the steaks are really thick and they're charred on the outside. And we just know they're not done on the inside. <laughs> But something else that just kind of gets to us as we're watching everybody on these massive grillers, um, you know, doing their thing, is the, the mistakes that we see with the Texas toast. So let's talk about that, guys. Number one, do you like Texas toast? Yes. I love it, but not soggy. Not soggy. <laughs> not soggy. <laughs> not that soggy. is the key. Not soggy. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about it. Guy, I know that... Um, there's someone who inspired you to make some Texas toast. Kind of tell us about that and what the technique is. Well, and it, it is my dad, uh, the whole breakfast thing. Mm -hmm. uh, even if he would do uh, breakfast inside in mm -hmm. the camper, you know, cooking the eggs, the sausage inside, uh, he would still go out and cook the toast on, on the, the grill. grill. So even breakfast toast, you know, not just the, the Texas stuff, but, but the thinner toast, he would go mm -hmm. out and do it on the grill. Mm -hmm. And his, his key was, you brown aside, you flip it, you butter, butter it while it's on the grill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While it's on the grill, you mm -hmm. butter it, which can be a little bit hot sometimes. But uh, butter it while it's on the grill, close that lid down, pan it for just a few more seconds, and it's great. Did you hear that? And Alan, would you agree that that's the proper technique? Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's, here's the thing, viewing audience out there. When you're at that local restaurant and you're on that grill, doing your Texas toast, the key is to brown the toast first. 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 That's really important. Don't slather the butter on the bread. Don't dip it in. Right. Don't dip it in. <laughs> on the grill. If it's dripping, it's no good. <laughs> right. Right. And then there's something about, and, and Guy, you said it, there's something about once the toast has browned a little bit, putting that butter on it. There's something about the grill and the fire from the grill that kind of gets that butter going that just does something. It sears it or something. It, it, it sears yeah. it. It does something. Almost caramelizes. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something, there's something about, about it. About that it, that. It, 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 it makes it taste better. And it's yeah. not soggy. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's the key. It can't, it can't be soggy. can't be soggy. <laughs> Any variations on the Texas toast? Like anything you said? Toast and butter. Anything yeah, sometimes, else? Sometimes, you know, it depends on what you're doing. If it's for breakfast, just toast and butter. If okay. it's for lunch or dinner or something like that, throw a little garlic on it. All right. Um, yeah, we do you that. You know, even just, just yeah. like a hint, just a hint of onion powder even. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we'll it depends, have to try again, that. depends on what you're having with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
let's go ahead and put some Texas toast on the grill. Okay. You want to put it on there? Oh man. You can switch positions yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have a do you have a grate on this? Do you have something? Yeah. Like <laughs> 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 All right, five, How many guys want? Um, let's do. There's three of us. Let's do three. Do three pieces of it. Yeah. Now the main thing about this is, is it's quick. You okay. Can't, you know, this isn't one of those things that you step away from for too much, too long. Let me ask you guys another question while the toast is doing its thing. Sauce on during the barbecue or not? Sauce on depends during on, I guess or after? It depends on the mood. Yeah, depends really? on the mood. What are you cooking? But you know, 90% of the time, I, well, I shouldn't say 90% of the time, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. Sometimes you, you want to put it on afterwards. You, you know, yeah. Sometimes you want to put it on and you want to put it on. Yeah. 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 And you finish your meat, and that side of the sauce is still, still there. there. Sitting there. That's when you know you got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people try to cover up the barbecue with the yeah. sauce, and they make right. a great sauce, but the meat isn't all that hot. How's the toast looking? We're getting there. All right. I'm, I'm learning on charcoal as I go here. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> kind of careful. Oh, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right. While Guy is um, focusing on the toast, if we have time, I'm also going to share with you a um, summer drink. And it's called Summer Sunshine Swizzle. All right. And it is a drink for the entire family. It's basically just a little bit of club soda, some lemonade, and some raspberry sherbet. So we'll try that if we have time. And also keep this in mind as we're getting, you know, taking a look at the meat and getting the toast together. You know, as Alan said earlier, charcoal grilling, when you're doing something like chicken or ribs, it takes a little bit of time. So unfortunately, um, we're not going to be able to see the finished product during this episode. But keep in mind, it's going to be really important that you tune in next week. Because next week, not only will we be finishing up the chicken and the ribs, but we'll also throw a few more things on the grill that we'd like to share with you. So keep that in mind as they're checking out the meat on the grill and the toast. Yeah, we just need some garlic. All right. <laughs> it's afternoon. It's time for garlic. <laughs> Should be right in there. Do we have garlic. We have garlic, garlic powder. First grab. Good job. <laughs> You guys like your garlic on before, after, during? Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Right. There's right something now. about the butter and the garlic. Trying to smoke a little bit and slow That's right. <laughs> Just a little bit of butter. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. We have chicken on the grill. We have ribs on the grill and some Texas toast. And in just a moment, we yeah, perfect timing. I was gonna say in just a moment, we're gonna grab a plate and we're gonna let you see this Texas toast before we end this episode. It's almost as fast as propane. Easy now. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, see, that's a grill master so, that can switch to, to charcoal yeah, that quick and make that good, huh? I like that flexibility. <laughs> so just keep in mind, if you're here in Champaign-Urbana, and you're at that local restaurant that allows you to cook your own food, and you're thinking about that baked potato and that Texas toast, this is how it should look, all right? Not soggy, crunchy, and I'm sure very, very tasty. This is Marie Polk with See You Mommy Connection. Stay tuned next week. Next week, you're gonna see the ribs, you're gonna see the chicken, and we're also gonna bring you a very special turkey burger recipe. 
Marie Polk with See Mommy Connection also have Alan Polk, the grill master, and Guy Nelson here on Father's Day with me today. Again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Stay tuned every Sunday evening at 8.30 p.m. Central right here on UPTV Cable Channel 6. God bless and good night.